can start with John Blow. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you guys joining us. Um, just uh, first of all, want to wish our women's basketball team uh, the best today. Uh, Coach Moore done a great job. Just really excited for them and their opportunity in the NCAA tournament. So uh, I'll be pulling for them this afternoon. But uh, encouraged by uh, the start to spring football, had a uh, pretty uh, effective scrimmage on Saturday. I think kind of wrapped up our first six days. And it wasn't a, a full scrimmage, but it was uh, partial as far as about 40 minutes of live goes that I thought were really, really uh, uh, good for our team and just kind of revealed a lot of things and, and uh, get a chance to see uh, who can make plays in space and who can, you know, um, break those tackles as well. So uh, just trying to, um, you know, see where we're at. As, as a program, I feel like our guys' energy has been really, really good. I uh, love the focus that our guys have been able to bring. Uh, doesn't mean we're not making mistakes. Obviously, we are. Uh, getting those things corrected each and every day. Uh, but uh, when you think about the goals you have for spring football and you look at those, and, and uh, I think we're definitely on, on the right path to, to improve our fundamentals and our technique and to develop depth. A lot of guys, a lot of young guys uh, getting lots of good reps and uh, doing some, some, some good things. Uh, but uh, the process continues of continuing to build our football team uh, day by day, step by step. So I've uh, been uh, um, you know, pretty physical. And in regards to by design, trying to, to do the things you can't do uh, outside of spring practices, uh, blocking and tackling and all those things that are involved with that. So I've had a few guys uh, dinged up along the way. I do want to announce that uh, uh, Dexter Williams uh, has uh, um, a torn ACL, and, uh, which was a big blow uh, to him and to us. Uh, happened in a non-contact situation, just kind of one of those things that is hard to explain. But uh, he, he will be out. Uh, he'll be having surgery here in a couple of weeks. So, uh, but uh, um, just got to be able to continue to develop that room and, and every other room as well. So, uh, questions at this time? Go ahead, John. Uh, just hearing about Dexter then there, um, what happens with the quarterback situation? I mean, is there a walk on that you're comfortable with? Or, and, and obviously, you've got Donovan McCauley coming in next year. How much more? Uh, pressure will there be on him to get ready? I mean, once he actually gets here. Yeah, I think that it does increase those. Um, uh, if you use the word pressure, but I, I think it definitely creates the the uh, need for him to be able to come in here ready to go, and and uh, which I have full confidence that he will, and excited for him and his opportunity that this uh, would create. But uh, um, at the same time, yeah, we have we have three walk-ons that are in our program right now that. Uh, I think all three do a really good job. They all three are part of our scrimmage and really just good, solid players that uh, have high care factor. And and uh, um, they all got several reps on Saturday, uh, quite a few reps actually, and uh, did some good things. So uh, that's why you go out and recruit a full room full of guys that uh, are bought in and doing the little things right. So, you know, Jack's obviously took a bunch of reps and and uh, um, is uh, doing a really good job this spring, and that has to continue. So, uh, it just continues to be a, a position where you, you have to um, take advantage of all your guys in that room and be able to put them in position to keep improving. All right, Matt Weaver and then Kevin Brockway. <clears throat> hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. Um, you mentioned before spring ball, one of the positions that, you know, were, was maybe a little bit, of, I don't say maybe a concern, but you were – anxiously kind of watching was the O-line. Just what what have you seen from their development here in these first, uh, I think you guys are what, six practices in in the last couple in pads? I mean, how they come along and are they making the progress that you're hoping to see? Yeah, I would say that uh, I'm very encouraged by their progress. Uh, it's a, a big group of guys. There's a whole bunch of them in there. Um, have a lot of guys that have gotten lots of reps. Um, got uh, the, the three new guys have really, uh, when I say three, um, I think even uh, Randy Holtz is considered. He still uh, hadn't been here, but but a year, and and he's really uh, showing some real growth um, that we expected him to show, and being his, his you know first full spring here now with us, and and uh, he's a big man, and uh, just learning how to play the position has been encouraging. Josh Sales, another guy coming in brand new right out of high school, and and uh, you know to me that's that's really been. Uh, huge for him to be able to get here early. Uh, you know, Vinny Fiedekable, same thing. Just two really good players that, that are strong 
and come from good programs, know how to play the position. Obviously, you know, it's a, it's a big jump from high school for any, any person, but, but especially on the offensive line. And so, but I, I've been really encouraged, uh, you know, with their preparation that they brought with them. And so those guys have been thrown in there and getting lots of quality reps. And I think Luke Haggard's really, really grown and developed. He's gained quite a bit of good weight, looks really good physically. And uh, we're just, uh, we got a lot, of, like, a lot of guys that are rotating in there right now by design and getting a lot of guys reps, a lot of guys preparation. So I, I've been encouraged by, by their growth so far. We've only, we're only six practices in, number seven will be tomorrow. But uh, it's an area that must continue to be a point of emphasis for us because we're, uh, you know, we're only as good as we are up front. All right, Kevin, then Jim. Well, yeah, Coach, um, you mentioned uh, guys uh, making plays in space during the scrimmage. Who were some of those guys, and what did they show you? Well, I tell you what, I was really uh, – a um, couple of guys on offense that have have stepped up throughout our first few practices. You know, uh, Davion, Urban Poindexter is a running back for us that uh, um, I, I knew was a good athlete, um, was really good for us last year on special teams, uh, has been excellent in our special teams drills. Um, and he um, is a guy that uh, really can do things with the ball in his hands. So, and then we're going to need him on special teams as well. So he's one that sticks out to me. And you know, DJ Matthews continues to be a guy that makes plays in space, has a has the the, uh, the twitch to be able to make guys miss, get open, and uh, do those kinds of things. And that that to me is really necessary for us to be able to create explosive plays. You know, with the, with the ball in our hands, and and I just feel like that uh, those guys stick out there. But I think on, on defense too. You know, you talk about making plays in spaces is, is both sides, and and uh, thought we really tackled well on the perimeter um, with our corners, especially. Um, I, I think Reese Taylor would be one for sure, and then uh, Jalen Williams just really uh, playing with a lot of confidence out there. You know, making tackles in space. Uh, our safeties as well tackled extremely well. Raheem Lane is really, um, man, it's so great to have him back. Uh, you just, you know, you kind of, you know, with his situation, you kind of forget he gets a little bit lost. And you know, he's one of our better players, especially on special teams a couple of years ago and played so much football for us uh, his first few years here. And then to lose him last year was was pretty uh Pretty, pretty, pretty big blow for us in the, in the back end, but he's come in at that free safety position and and just shown. Uh, now he's a little over aggressive at times and and maybe gave up some things because of that. But uh, tackles well, uh, smart player, high care factor, and encouraged by his. And then and then Juwan Burgess made some plays in space too. So uh, thought on the back end we covered well and and and, and played. We you know, always you, tackling is something you always got to be working on. I mean it's never. You know, you never feel like you get enough work on it. You always have questions about it going into the season uh, just because, you know, you don't want to go live all the time. But uh, we'll have another big scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, we'll be thud tempo tomorrow. But uh, so those, those are the guys to me that kind of stuck out. Hey, Ryan Barnes is another one that's as, as a, a tight end here in our system and, and just, you know, came here as a walk on. He's worked so hard. And he just made plays. You know, he catches everything anywhere near him. His blocking has improved. So those are guys that have kind of stuck out to me in making plays on the perimeter. All right, Jim, then Tom. Hey, Coach, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good, sir. Uh, in watching the NCAA tournament, I, I've seen all these upsets. And <laughs> one of the things I think is because early on, they were not able to play different teams uh, that play a very, very different style. Uh, have you seen, especially with your freshmen, with the COVID impact, the development slowing, still slowing as you come through because you have a lot of talent out there. Have you seen it seen it slow up where you would like to be right now as opposed and, and getting to where you want to be this fall? Well, there's no question. You know, it, it plays a role in, in everything and, and everybody's in the same boat. You know, different people had different number of spring practices in a year ago. You know, that really kind of stunted people's, you know, development uh, by not having those. And then you get into fall camp and, and uh, yeah, we, we didn't get near the uh, padded practice time that you usually get. But I will say this, I do think that, uh, you know, we had the, really kind of the, the walk through, jog through kind of mode that they allowed us to get into last year as we prepared for um, fall camp, the second fall camp that, that, that was started after we, uh, the season was postponed. And so I think those things have helped. And we've talked about using some of that things in our preparation and, and going into the fall. So, but yeah, I think anytime, you know, those kind of things are, are different, you know, and you, you think about the class of kids that, uh, 
they're going to be coming in here, you know, based on, you know, I know Illinois is playing their, their season right now in, in the spring, the high school football, and same with the state of Virginia. we got recruits coming from those areas. And, and uh, so just a unique whole experience for everybody, and there's no doubt. Yeah, I watch these NCAA games too, and, and uh, you know, I did the whole bracket thing, and mine's pretty much shot right now. So, but I'm not sure if anybody's is not the case. You know, I don't know who would have picked all these upsets. Uh, I think it was really difficult to project. But, but yeah, this fascinates me, you know, when you think about that whole dynamic and, you know, what are the reasons why. For all, there's probably multiple reasons for them, you know. So, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, things happen and that, that we, you know, we're still not out of COVID. I mean, we're still doing the, the testing on a consistent basis and the masks and, and the spacing and all the stuff that you do to, to prevent it. We've got other, other programs have been put on, you know, um, you know, had to go on pause, you know, uh, across the country uh, even now. So you just got to, you know, man, you got to keep staying the course with all that stuff, staying uh, diligent with the process and just adapting and trying to, wherever you feel like you're deficient in areas you haven't got enough in. And so like right now we're trying to tackle as much as we can, block as much as we can, you know, the physical part of practice as much as we can uh, without overdoing it, you know, and uh, because you just, you know, you never know what the future is going to hold or how, how this thing will look moving forward. Hey, Tom, when you gonna come out with the, uh, sorry, when are you going to come out with the, your own line of black leather jackets? <laughs> I like those. They, uh, when I when I first got the head job, I went to Mitch. And I said, "You got to get our staff leather coats. I love those to recruit in." So, that's uh, yep. I'm about new for give me a new one. All right, go ahead, Tom. Give me Al Durham's closing line. <laughs> Tom, you you just kind of touched on it briefly there about get physical in, in these spring practices. Um, but two things: one, like. How close do you uh, try to juggle that fine line between uh, being uh, too physical or not physical enough during the course of spring? And secondly, um, you uh, you have talked each of this early in the last couple of springs about how critical this time is to not only develop physically, but develop mentally in regards to what they're trying to accomplish. Do you see a lot of that uh, going on this spring too in regards to what lies ahead for you all? You do, you know, and in your first question here about the physicality piece, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a constant, uh, you know, discussion with our staff, you know, and, and I involve our strength staff and Aaron Wellman heavily in, in that conversation. Uh, just did this morning at our staff meeting about, you know, where we are and, and uh, you know, because you can, you, you, and that's why, in the, even honestly, that's where the, the comment I made post-practice on Saturday about calluses and, and uh, that's the approach we want to have, you know, when you do things, if you do it too quickly, uh, it creates blisters and you don't want that. You, you want that slowed, you know, methodical building of the contact and the physicality and whether it's both mental and physical toughness that you're growing and building in your team. You know, you got you got to do that in an incremental way. And, and I think that's a wise way to do it. And so we just try to be, you know, every, every spring looks a little different. Uh, based on where your team's at, you know, and, and how guys are handling things. And, you know, we have a pretty mature team in terms of a lot of guys that play a lot of football, but we also have a lot of, a lot of younger guys. So I just think you just have to, you know, you, you, you go through, you get ready, you know where you're at each day, and then we have that practice, and then we evaluate that practice, and then we meet again afterwards, and we decide, okay, is, this, is it time to go more hitting next practice? Do we need to back off a little bit based on where we are? Sometimes that's the same case with running. You know, and you know what kinds of practice create more wear and tear on your legs, guys, which creates soft tissue injuries. Just trying to prevent those. Because obviously when guys get, when they miss and they can't practice, you can't get those days back for those individual guys, you know. So that's why it's so critical that guys have spring practices. And, and then you talk about all the stuff we're trying to accomplish and, and build in our team, you know, schematically and all the adjustments you want to make and working through those and all the reps you got to get. So there's a lot, of, a lot, that's why spring's critical. I mean, it's a huge part of the development of your football team and the mental side of it and the learning. And, and you want to get them exposed to so many things and then teach them how to, you know, do the player practices over the summertime, you know, and show them how, what those are going to look like. So we got to do all that right now so we can empower our guys to maximize May, June, and July. Now, I know May is a discretionary month, but, you know, they're still going to continue to work and develop on their own. So to me, it's just a matter of maximizing the time we have with our team, and from a physical perspective, schematic perspective, and then making sure the guys are taking care of their bodies. Dustin, then Paul. Is 
Sorry about that, Tom. That's uh, okay. You talked earlier in, uh, I think it was in January, about just becoming more multiple in the run game and, and you know, kind of shake, shake up a little, little bit how you guys approach that. What have you been able to accomplish so far? You said you're obviously going to watch a lot of video and, and consider a lot of things from that angle. Just what have you um, come up with so far or what kind of direction do you guys head and what have you been able to implement so far in spring practice? In that regard? Well, it's definitely been a focus. And uh, that's, that's, that's an area that uh, we really um, have, you know, invested in as a staff to, to look at and, and work on and, and, uh, and, are, and are doing those things in practice. I and mean, that's, that's one big reason why, you know, we you know, don't want to put that out there publicly for anybody to, to watch and see. And uh, um, when you have your spring game, you'll, you'll, you'll stay pretty vanilla, which is everybody in America is that way, you know. So, but uh, bottom line is, is yeah, I mean, I, I like what I see. I, I feel like we're doing the things we need to be doing. And that's a continual process for us. That's going to, gonna, you know, we got, uh, you know, nine more practices left, uh, including the spring game, to, to work on these things. And so, you know, just want to make sure that we're getting as much on film as we can for us to evaluate uh, what we like and don't like, and then also for our, to create the teach tapes for our guys for, for the summertime, you know, to be able to get in there and study and, and get things corrected and cleaned up and, and all that. So, but yeah, there's no question, you know, we know we got to run the football better. And, uh, and, I, and I think we got to stop the run better, you know, based on the l last year's group. Even though we did some good things, it was just we gave up too many explosive plays uh, in the run game especially. So uh, really have to work on that and working hard on both sides of the football uh, to, to be more multiple in our run game and, and be better at stopping it. And so that's uh, obviously, you know, when you're dealing with your own team, that's a great uh, emphasis because both sides are getting work at the exact same time. And so that allows us to really, you know, the more multiple we are on offense up front, that gives us a chance to be able to, um, you know, defend more things and work on th some things that we know that we're going to see throughout the season as well. So it really gives a dual benefit. But, uh, yeah, we got to continue to make that a, a point of emphasis. Paul and then Aaron. Hey, Coach, at times the, uh, the defense is ahead of the offense uh, in the early going. Um, how is the defense looking under Coach Warren? How's that transition been? It's been good. You know, it's, uh, you know, just he's coming here and, and learning our system and, and uh, with his own personality, you know, that he brings as, as it's really like a, you know, the leadership style of every person is a little bit different. Uh, he's probably a little more like, Myself and some some things that, as far as the, the leadership way that he goes about things, personality-wise, than maybe than maybe Kane was, but uh, uh, but not 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 a lot of variance. I mean, to me, there's you, know, you kind of for me, you went after a certain type of person uh, to fulfill that role, and and uh, he he fit those criteria as, as a, his character, his leadership, ability to communicate and and motivate those guys. That, to me, that's such a big part of defense is just getting them to buy in. Uh, to what you do, which we already have a system here in place that the players have bought into, and uh, to play your tail off, to, to keep getting better. And so, and he does a good job connecting with our guys in that area, and he's, he's a very focused, detailed guy. I love his attention to detail, and uh, that's really impressed me a lot uh, about him. And, and I think even you know, the military background, the, the way he coaches, the way he's just, he's relentless, uh, the way he organizes everything, the, just the presentation of, of everything that he has our guys doing is, is really, really, um, you know, at a high level, you know. So, yeah, I think that the, the defense should be. I always tell our team, and they, they better be ahead of the offense this time of year, you know, and uh, whether it's early in spring ball or early in, in fall camp. Uh, but, and, and that's been, probably been the case. You know, we've had, we have competitions, but I will say this, we did some competitions even on Saturday and it was it was very very competitive back and forth you know so um, the defense did win the competition but but I think that that's what I expect and I want them to be that way and we, we do have a lot of guys back on both sides of the football but but definitely a lot of guys that have played a lot of football on defense so um, just want those guys to not be satisfied with just being a, a good defense we want to be great you know and, and that's really what we're pushing for is, is to be an elite uh, defense top in the country top in the Big Ten and and that's what we're, we're that's what we're chasing you know, we talk about chasing greatness and in, in all the areas that uh, you're involved with personally, you know, academically, and then on the football field. And then as a football team, that to me is, you know, you play great defense and you create takeaways and you, you know, create havoc. That's a big emphasis for us here now with, with Coach, um, you know, Warren as a big, uh, you know, new phrase that we're using, a new word that we're using that, that uh, I love. And I think it fits with everything we talk about with takeaways, tackling, and efforts. So uh, that doesn't, that isn't going to change and he's done a great job of taking what we have and continue, continuing to find ways to make it better. 
Aaron and then Zach. Hey, Tom, talking with Thomas last week, he kind of said he was looking back to that Michigan State game, and he said by the time you caught up with him in the tunnel, he had kind of cried all his tears mm -hmm. already. Um, can you just walk him back to what you were going through as a father then and in the coming days or weeks, was there any thought in your head that maybe he should uh, not continue to play football given the injury history he's had? Yeah, you know, as far as the uh, the day that it all happened, you know, I, I think the biggest thing that I remember was just, you know, the sick feeling in my gut when I, you know, was told what what, inj what the injury was, and they told me that out on the field because uh, they knew right right away that his, his hip was out of socket. So, um, and, and I knew what that meant uh, for the rest of this season. And, yeah, my mind even went to, you know, man, I didn't know if that was going to be it, you know, for him. He has had some, some serious injuries, and, and uh, you know, you got to sit back and evaluate your, your whole future and what you want to do. And so, uh, but it was just, uh, it was tough because that was such a, important win for us, you know, and, and to shut them out, you know, at their place. I knew it was the first time we'd beaten them in 19 years. I, I always kind of keep track of those things, and, and I knew that was a big deal. You win, win the brass platoon, but at the same time, I'm just like, I just, all that was just kind of, you know, uh, tempered by knowing that Thomas was, you know, season was over, you know, and, and uh, so it just, it's just tough. You know, it's a tough balance, and you being your son, and, and, and I, as I got emotional, you know, after the, you know, the week after talking about it, because I know what he'd been through. I know how hard he'd worked to get back and, and how much adversity he's overcome, even just the, the whole journey to get here, you know, and, and our whole family's journey and everything that that, that all has encompasses. So all those emotions were part of that. And, and you know, so it's just tough. It's, it's hard, you got, but you got to be able to, you know, compartmentalize those things and, and be a, be the head coach of the team and, and, and also be his dad, you know, because he needed me to be his dad at that time. So, you know, that's that's the part that you just got to, you know, there's no there's no book for that. There's no, you know, prepare for that. You just, you know, try to pray for wisdom to handle things the, the best way possible that, that he knows you love him and care about him and your team knows that you're still the leader of the team and, and everybody has value no matter who they are. So that's kind of where you're at with all that. And then as far as his future, you know, I mean, it's – as a decision that, that we talked about, and he definitely wanted, wanted. He didn't really ever, you know, hesitate in that regard. I mean, I'm sure in the back of your mind, you kind of wonder, how's this gonna, how's this gonna look moving forward, and, and can I come back from this? And so, you know, the doctors were optimistic, and there were some different parts to it that we had to kind of wait and see, you know, how, how the injury was was healing, and, and in terms of definitely with the, the blood flow to the hip socket and all those kind of things that. that kind of separate, you know, whether you can play or not in the future. So everything has continued to go positively in that direction. And, and he's a, he is a tough, tough kid, and he works extremely hard. And it is a painful rehab. It is as painful probably as any, any injury you have and to try and get that hip movement back. And, and so he's, he's right on schedule. He's doing great. And uh, just, I mean, I'm a little surprised he's moving around as well as he is at this point, knowing what he's been through. So he has every intention of, of finishing this thing out. And so uh, couldn't be more proud of him. He's a, he's a warrior. Zach and John. Hey, Tom, I, I guess I'm just curious. Um, it's something that seems like it's gotten a lot of traction for your program on social media. Just what's the, what's the thought behind the, what, I guess, players of the practice award? It seems yeah. like that's something that your coaches are, are making a real big deal of. I was just curious about yeah, I just, uh, you know, we was always as a staff trying to find ways to, you know, uh, recognize our guys. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, this time of year, you know, and we can't have, you know, the, the scrimmages are closed and, and you know, I, I don't know who's going to be at the spring game or not. I, I haven't really heard all the details on that. And, and just trying to get a chance for our players to be able to, you know, um, get recognized for their work, you know, during spring, which, which is mostly done like, by, you know, behind closed doors per se, you know, and give us a chance for our coaching staff to, to highlight those guys. I just think that when guys work so hard and they sacrifice so much for, for this team, I just want to, you know, I've always had the belief where, and when, when, the, when the players buy in, and when they're willing to do all the little things that that that, uh, that it takes to become great as a football team, that that you you tell them, and I've told our team this when I got here. I say hey, when when the individuals you know buy into the team and the, and the team does well, who gets recognized? Those individuals. So it's putting yourself over here and putting your team first. That's LEO. That's the whole idea of just being an unselfish, great teammate and doing what's best for this team. And when that happens, when the team has success. 
the individuals get recognized. And so I just want to be able to continue to find ways to recognize our guys and, and uh, show them that we appreciate their daily focus and their daily production that they have in practice when maybe nobody else can see it, but, uh, but we do. And then we get a chance through social media to put those out there and have the coaches tweet it out and I retweet it. And, and I think that that's an important way to, uh, to continue to build the brand of our program of, of guys being able to, to know that, man, it's, uh, you know, we're all part of this thing and we're going to work really hard uh, as a football team, but, uh, but you will get recognized when you separate yourself. John, and then we'll wrap up with Matt. A really random question. I heard that uh, those cardboard cutouts that were ordered, that there were like a couple hundred of them that you had to sign. Um, <laughs> do they just kind of dump a stack of these things at your house? And how long does it take to work through them? And yeah. are there any particular <laughs> ones that stood out to you that you remember just because they were kind of goofy or weird? Uh, no, I mean, I'm just, I'm signing them like, you know, it's, just, it's like you put my ice my wrist down for a little bit. And then uh, Mike Doig and I, he has a systematic way of setting them up in the, H.H. Craig room there, we put them all out on the desk, and I got helmets as well that we, it's kind of, we have a little, you know, kind of a process that we go through to, to do them, not all at the same time, but uh, we got to just knock them out a little bit segments, <laughs> yeah, so there's no question, it's, uh, but that's great though, that's awesome, and appreciate everybody's support, and uh, I've been signing a lot of things with stuff like that, that local businesses, different places that have been involved to help us throughout the pandemic, and, and different, you know, people that, that got involved in something like that, so yeah, I, uh, I've signed a whole bunch of things, I, but I, I don't. I don't have time to go through and evaluate every single one of them. So I just put down my uh, my stuff and press on to the next one. All right, Matt, last one. Hey, Coach. Um, getting back to Dexter, obviously with the injury, I'm guessing his status for the upcoming season is probably in doubt. Any talk? With, you guys have a couple open roster spots, or maybe looking at the transfer market to bring in depth at quarterback, or do you feel comfortable with what you guys have going into the fall? Well, we feel good. You know, we, we have had those discussions since the since the injury. Uh, don't know exactly what we'll do yet for sure. Uh, but uh, at the same time, you know, it was the same um, numerical value we had a year ago, scholarship wise at that position, you know, so I feel like that, uh, you know, obviously, yeah, we mentioned already today that uh, Donovan McCauley opportunity has uh, been elevated for sure because of that. And so, but we're definitely never going to leave any, any options, you know, um, off the table yet. We're still looking at everything possible to be able to do what's best for, for our program right now and, and put us in the best position to have um, all of our, you know, everything covered for the fall and making sure we're in the best position possible to have a, a great football season. All right. Thanks, Tom. Have a great day. Hey,